Hey guys, what's up? Z here, and I have here the Civil Top Air, probably my favorite Apollo Lake laptop so far. It has an N3450 processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and a 1080p screen. And also one more thing, this has one of the weirdest unboxings I've ever experienced so far. So before we get into the review, let's do a quick unboxing of the Civil Top Air. So when I took out the DHL wrapper, the box says T-Book Air, so I thought, oh, it must be a tech class, but it's not. If you open up the box, the laptop does not have a brand on it, and the accessories don't have any brand either. So it's not tech class or civil top. So what is it? So when I turn on the laptop, it says T-Bow, something I've never seen before, so definitely confusing. I'm 99% sure this is the civil top because it looks like the exact same as a picture on Gearbest. So with that being said, let's start with the full review. The build here is great, it's not super amazing but it's definitely pretty good. The body is made of matte metal and it's pretty high quality, it feels nice, it feels expensive and definitely no complaints here. The air feels pretty light, it honestly looks pretty fine as well. And when you open up the laptop, the bezels surrounding the screen are quite small. They're not XPS 13 Infinity Display small but definitely small enough to look nice. The screen doesn't open up very wide which is a bit annoying. The keys on the keyboard are plastic, they're okay but they're not amazing, the typing experience is pretty good though, a bit of flex but not enough to interfere with the experience. The trackpad is kinda small, it's wide but it's pretty short. The trackpad material is plastic and it's pretty smooth to touch so it's nice. Single finger accuracy is not bad, two finger scrolling is actually pretty good. Out of all the Chinese laptops I've tested, Chewy, Tech Class, Voyo, Onda, this laptop has the best trackpad so far except for the Xiaomi Air 12. There is also a fingerprint sensor on this laptop but there is no driver installed so I haven't been able to get it to work just yet. So finally in terms of ports it's pretty anemic, there's just a USB-C port and a headphone jack. It does come with an adapter and it works properly. Moving on to the screen it's 1080p and it's honestly quite good. No it's not a surface book screen which is obviously way better but the display here is definitely good. Colors are pretty accurate and they are vivid enough, the screen does get super bright. I can't seem to find any official info on the screen brightness but I would say it's as bright as a surface book which means around 400 nits. The screen here is definitely not bad, no complaints here. There are no external speaker holes on this laptop, but the speakers are above the keyboard. It's definitely enough for watching TV in most places, but it's not loud enough to be, for example, on the car. Audio quality is average and max volume. There is some buzzing coming from the laptop, which can be annoying, but lower it a little bit and it disappears. There is no bass to speak of here though. Here's some sample audio. Lucky professional drinker. I wanted to make fun of stupid people while I get drunk. My two true passions. I'm getting notes of uh, dried robin's blood, old dirty cashews, and just a hint of a robot's bathwater. I will work to make Pawnee my wonderful hometown as good as it can be. What do you think? I think you should lose the first line and the last line and all of the other lines and instead just walk up to the mic and meow really loudly for eight minutes. Audio. So battery life here is probably the weakest part of this laptop. It only has an 8000 mAh battery and I was only able to get around 6 hours of screen on time of light use, some Chrome, some words, some email, and I also downloaded about 10 gigabytes of games from Steam and the Windows Store as well, so dead in 6 hours. Gaming or heavy use and it's dead in 2-3 to three hours max. The charger is a bit weird, it's a cable with a USB-C on both sides which actually makes it difficult to attach to anything other than the official charger. The laptop comes with Windows 10 that is not activated which means you need to get it activated or you can just leave it. The only thing that doesn't work is signing into your Microsoft account, everything else still works. There is still this annoying pop-up that comes up every now and then telling you to activate but that is pretty easily ignored. This computer still has an eMMC drive but this is the fastest Apollo Lake laptop that still has an eMMC faster than the Chewy Lapbook but still slower than the Voyo VBook which does have an SSD. It's nice though, Chrome runs very nice on the laptop, scrolling is pretty smooth but still not as smooth as Internet Explorer, but smooth enough. You still cannot stream 4K YouTube on Chrome though. Heavier stuff like photo editing runs okay, editing small files is fine, you get too many layers and you're dead. I also tried running DaVinci Resolve which is a very robust but free video editing software and 1080p stuff is fine, exporting does take a lifetime though. I honestly don't recommend this for exporting 1080p video, but editing the video should be okay as long as you have some way to copy over that project over to your desktop for exporting. Gaming wise, Windows Store games run fine at 1080p. You're not going to get 60 FPS, but between 30 to 45 should be okay. I tried playing Left 4 Dead 2 and I can game properly at 60 FPS at 720p, but anything more and frame rate drops through the roof. 
The camera here is obviously pretty bad as well. It's about 2 megapixels and the quality as you can see is no good. The audio quality is barely passable for Skype as well. Not much else to say about here. I just recently got the Cube Thinker and I cannot believe I'm actually thinking of replacing the Cube Thinker with the Civil Top already. Yes, the battery life is pretty bad, but other than that, this is a great laptop. I like it way more than any Apollo Lake laptop I've tested so far, even with the bad battery life. So as to whether I recommend this laptop, if you want to talk about pure price and performance, no, this laptop does not give you good value for money. It's 400 bucks for an Apollo Lake laptop, and you can get the Chewy Lapbook for half that price. But based on the merits of this laptop itself, yes, I do wholeheartedly recommend this laptop. I mean, the fact that I'm considering replacing the Core M Cube Linker with the Apollo Lake N3450 Civil Top Air speaks volumes as to how much I like this laptop. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Likes will be awesome, subs will be even more awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.